This here is my plastic into fuel reactor. Very, very naked plastic into fuel reactor. Matter of fact, it's about as naked as the juice. Well, it's, there's a lot of things underway, a lot of things I'm going to be doing to upgrade this. Let's try it again. This here is my plastic into fuel reactor. And these are my two enormous balls of valves. And my balls are going in your face. You have endured the wrath of my ball valves within your face. Smushed upon your face to see this. <laughs> the next contraption of mine. This, my friends, is my world the domination doom ray. <laughs> Continuous feed system for my plastic to fuel reactor. Now come with me so I can break down how this is gonna work. So up to this point, I have built five plastic to fuel prototypes over the past five years, and every single one has been batch fed. What that means is I can only operate the machine with how much of a big load of plastic I can jam in her mouth at once. And she can take a big load in her mouth, all things considered, but that's not good enough for me. I'd rather be able to continuously put loads of plastic in her mouth time after time until she can't even handle that anymore. Now just to paint a picture for you as to how inefficient it is to operate a machine like this batch fed, let's say your name is Tony. You're on Fifth Ave, you're working for Mangione's Pizza Shop, okay? You got a pizza oven that can only take in one pizza at a time, but you got five pizzas to bake. Now imagine this, right? Imagine that every time you want to put in another pizza pie, you turn the oven off. Let it cool down and then let it reheat just to put the other pie in instead of just taking the one out, get it out, and then put the next one in. Your boss will come down and be like, hey, Tony, what the hell is your problem, you dingus? Mr. Mangione himself would come down and tell you you're being a dingus. You're wasting time. You're wasting money. Right? Look, if you ladies would ask Luigi how he bakes his pizzas, Instead of asking him how you could get your fennel and rub it on his pepperoni, then maybe we get somewhere on this earth. Ask the important questions. Get to the nitty gritty. But you're too busy asking him what the size of his pepperoni. So, I've been doing that. He's mad at me. Because I've been making my plastic to fuel pizzas that way in here. As a batch for the past five years. That would never be efficient. It just cannot be efficient that way. You have to load in plastic continuously. She has been designed. I have built her. I have built her to handle all types of freak-ons and all types of freak-offs. And she can handle plastic being continuously put in her behind. Thank you guys for making it to this point in the video. I want to thank every single Patreon member. All you guys help me and the project so much. I also want to thank everybody who has donated to the GoFundMe. The GoFundMe just crossed $10,000, and I'm so grateful. I know I have a large goal of a million dollars, but I don't care even if it was $2 raised. I'm grateful to have anybody that even believes in what I do enough to donate anything, let alone, you know, like, share, comment, all those types of things. So I appreciate you guys. And lastly, I also appreciate you guys so much for all the merch. Back when we did the event with Dr. Parkinson, where we ran his 1928 Durant off of plastic fuel, we got so many merch orders, more merch orders than, I, than I've ever got before. So I just want to thank all you for all your support. All your help goes to the project and helps make this project progress and get better. Just for reference, these ball valves you see in this video, they're $900 together. Very expensive. And then of course, I have all these other parts, all these other metal spools and tri-clamp fittings and vacuum pumps I have to get. And so you guys make the vision possible. Thank you so much. All right, so let us break down how this airlock continuous feed system will work for the plastic to fuel reactor. We will use this piece of plastic as an example. And of course, somebody donated the plastic with a shit still in it, corn syrup still in the plastic. We should not be using this anyway, but whatever. So first of all, this valve here will open. Boom, the plastic will fall, be loaded in, fall down. Choo! The valve will close, boom. Now right here, there's gonna be continuous auger blades, shaftless auger blades that go from here all the way down. So the plastic will fall down, 
the agrobenzoyl spit is going to travel, 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 travel down the stream right here to the sight glass. We'll be able to see it. And then we open uh, the vacuum port and the vacuum pump right here will suck out all the air. Suck out all the air from that top bit right there. Now there's no more air in here, okay? Yes, no more air. Next, the plastic will then have to fall down, but we must first open this valve. Boom, this valve is open, and this valve is open to the chamber. Now make sure this valve is closed so that way no air is being sucked in, right? But this valve is open to the chamber, and now the plastic is right here, the auger blades turn back on, boom, 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 all the uh, shredded plastic loading falls down. Boom, boom, boom. Air keeps it airtight, keeps the machine under vacuum, falls into the machine just like that, doesn't bloody matter. And like I said, this machine, she's a freaky one. She'll take all the loads in her mouth, doesn't matter if there's contamination, doesn't matter if there's dirt. Of course, pure plastic is better, especially for variables and such. But nonetheless, the microwaves do not discriminate between if there's dirt or not. So it doesn't matter. And that's how we'll be able to continuously load plastic into this machine while it's running, while it's already hot. That's how you get it efficient. That's how you don't waste time or energy, baby. Because guys, look, the average run of this machine takes about four and a half to five hours. And the first two to three hours is really spent getting all the different chambers of the machine up to temperature. Every single quadrant you see, quadrant one, two magnetrons. Quadrant three, or two, two magnetrons. And then quadrant three here, two magnetrons. But you know, it's full of plastic. It takes a long time to heat up each quadrant. This is thick metal, but once the metal is heated, especially with insulation, it stays heated for a long time. So once we get it hot, we load in plastic, and it's not going to take as much energy to break it down. We can turn more of these magnetrons off. We may, instead of needing all six on, maybe we might only need four on, right? Maybe we might only need three on, right? One per section. That's consuming half the power, but we're able to process the same amount of plastic because, the, you know, the heat is already stored in the walls, and then it's being added in. And um, you guys have to remember, as we add in plastic to this machine, we're adding in energy because plastic is such a dense source of energy. So going into kind of like more law of thermodynamics and such, we're adding energy into the machine. We're not creating energy, but we're adding it in and we're drafting it at a more and more efficient rate to the point where it could possibly get to a point where, where we're able to get an equitable fraction of energy out to the energy input because plastic is such an energy dense source it's just like when you pump crude oil from the ground the pump that operates takes energy but the amount of crude oil that's coming out right from that pump pumping it out is actually more energy because it's so much energy within the crude oil that's a theory but we'll see if when we get there with the continuous feed now of course this will be a, con a semi-continuous operation because i still have to be sitting here punching in the buttons to open the valve close the valve open the valve close the valve turn the blades on but this will still be the design used nonetheless when it's completely continuous meaning i just sit back take a piss right and the whole thing is just doing its thing right being shredded on its own going through conveyor belts being loaded up on its own just add a few sensors or Arduinos, extra stuff. But, I, you know, backing home with a later model, nonetheless, that's the point. And um, another thing, I know I'm just kind of going on a tangent here, but you get excited. But obviously, look, the machine's naked, stripped down to her, her basic part. She's a little stripper now. She's in that era of her life. She's a Miami stripper. So, <laughs> anyway, let me throw this down in. This is my little plastic bag. Guys, I am, I had a uh, fiberglass around here. And the fiberglass is crap. I'm, I'm getting a ceramic fiber, cow wool, much better R value. And I want to ask you guys, should I wrap outside of the ceramic fiber insulation with like an aluminum wrap to make this whole machine look silver? And also, give me some suggestions for how I can insulate the front cap. It's okay if I need to weld something on here, like some little arms or a bracket or something to hold the insulation in. I want us, I really like the look of the front still being metallic though. That's the thing. That's why I haven't insulated it up to this point. But give me some suggestions for the front insulation, all right? So we got things coming on the way. I also mounted the computer stuff up. So um, it's better for me visually. I like to stand anyway, I don't like to sit. So we mounted it up. I said, just have all this wood here. <laughs> We're making it work. Um, <clears throat> actually, give me some suggestions for this, too, because you see, like, I add these braces, but this wood itself is still coming forward. It's kind of scaring me. Now, this piece of wood here is like a backup if this does come out or crack. 
by something. Maybe the wood, I need to just use thicker wood, but you see the wood itself is bending. So it's kind of scary. Maybe a central support going up, maybe down. I don't know. Give me some suggestions for that, guys. But yeah, I took the insulation off the reactor. And obviously, um, as you can tell, the two newer tanks and the one older tank when we built this out of, I built this out of the, the uh, 300 pound propane tanks. This was the oldest one. You see the rust. And these ones were the newer ones. But it looks great. I mean, it looks great. You can clearly see just the paint kind of chipped off just from freaking, you know. <laughs> of course, the temperatures, all the different ch temperature changes. But everything is looking amazing. And there is one thing I'm not, I haven't considered, I haven't bought parts for, but the continuous discharge of the machine. Now, we don't, get, we don't get that much carbon, so I'm thinking I just will put a big tank under here. Maybe like almost like a keg. Think about like a keg, but, you know, a little bit stubbier. I just put a keg that connects down here, and then that will capture all the carbon after, and it probably won't fill up until after maybe probably like, like, I don't know, I would guess... 10 continuous all-day runs of putting in like maybe a few hundred pounds of plastic total But we'll see but the continuous discharge system will literally just be this the same Thing just at the end and then it just would have to you know It has to be an airlock if you want to continuously continuously get carbon out But we don't get that much carbon out so we'll see and then the only thing I didn't consider or tell you in this uh, continuous system is that the initial vacuum loading or way that we load plastic in will be this vacuum loading system I have formulated to load in the shredded plastic so there's no microplastic pollution. So that's it. And uh, that's how it's going to work. So thank you guys very much for listening to all my rants and rumbles. Um, I am going to start working on this. Um, I need to build the, the auger blade system. Got to build it from scratch by hand and bend it around a tree again. And I also am um, in the works of repairing the auger blades. I just got them out the machine. And now I got to repair them. In fact, they're over here. I'm basically going to be rebuilding them from scratch again. But this time I'm going to do something new, okay? I have all this rebar over here that I'm going to be ready to use. Let me show you guys. So you see what went wrong. See, they just got super stretched out and all this type of stuff. And they contorted on themselves from too much torque. But what I'm going to do, you see, this whole time they've been shaftless. Now, there's a reason we make them shaftless, okay? And it's because microwaves reflect off of metal. If there's a big shaft going through, we, it's going to, the microwaves really won't be able to get as, to as much plastic. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put these type of support bars throughout the entire uh, length of the thing and then hopefully that will stop them from contorting. I'll make them the support bars out of rebar. I have tried support bars before but um, when I made the blades before with the support bars the blades the tolerances were whack so the support bars actually made it impossible to slide the blades in the machine but I'm going to do it differently this time. Um, <clears throat> so don't worry about it. We're going to figure it out guys. It won't be a big deal. It won't be a problem at all. Uh, just stay tuned. Okay because I got a lot of stuff on the way. A lot of upgrades. So you guys can see I'm going to let you guys know now that it's probably going to be not until mid-February until we can start running the machine because I have a lot of repairs, upgrades to do. I also have a lot of things to do with these tanks. Um, I'm going to re be replacing all the quick connect fittings with, um, with JICs, JICs and uh, flares. So no more quick connect. Everything's going to be wrenched down. I... Unfortunately, I cannot afford to get three more of these tanks because all this was expensive. Just for reference, the single one of these valves or two of them together was $900, those big ball valves. But I, I eventually need to get four of these tanks or four more, especially being continuous. We just have too much gas production, too much of it for these. I need to get four of the big boys. So, yeah, but that's what we got in mind, guys. All these upgrades for the plastic into fuel reactor.